Delka. Edward. Oh, thank goodness you're okay. That's not completely the case. I have some bad news for you. I saw the caretakers, both the husband and wife. Really? Where were they? They're dead. Apparently, they were the ones responsible for killing all the thieves and desperados that were sneaking into the monastery. And with good reason. I don't know. I don't believe You should know very well what has been going on. Ogden was trying to avenge the death of Elaine. Death? Of Elaine? I don't believe it. This is preposterous. Who is Elaine? I have no idea. All I know is Elaine's spirit called me to this place. Tell me, who is Elaine? And Patrick. The caretakers told me that robbers broke into Elaine's home while Patrick was away and murdered her. Elaine was a benefactor for the caretakers. They took it upon themselves to murder every single robber and desperado that entered their grounds. It was a form of revenge for them. I'm originally from Ireland, you see. Although small, my family had a successful business and was soon able to send me to school, which I loved from a very early age. I was soon accepted to a prestigious university in England. And with my parents' assistance, I made my way across the ocean. I met Patrick at university. We were both studying chemistry and embarking upon similar paths. About that same time, I began competing for the love of a beautiful woman, Elaine. And we had a falling out. I loved Elaine with all my heart. Omnia Vincent Amor. But love does not conquer all. I soon discovered that I lacked the social status and inheritance money necessary to properly care for someone so well-bred and sheltered as Elaine. I gave up my suit and made way for Patrick. To ease my pain, I joined the church and left the secular world behind. And being the perfectionist I am, the Vatican made me a bishop in charge of some very important matters. But it's been so hard to distance myself from one's emotional attachments. Although I had not seen them for 20 years, I wished them all the best in their life together. And if it hadn't been for this, I wouldn't have thought twice about seeing Patrick again. That's right, Patrick. How, how can this be? He promised me he was going to take care of Elaine and make her happy. What could have happened? Being a witness to the gory aftermath. I have a hard time believing the caretakers were acting on revenge alone. Believe me, it was an unimaginably heinous sight. And what about these monsters that keep appearing? No, there's a bigger secret we have yet to uncover. This is the key to Patrick's mansion. Shall we go? One of the reasons why I love this game so much is, well, I love mysteries, um, but I'm very stupid, so I need to be explained everything. So yeah, well, I love mysteries, but there's that. Um, but I mostly love games where you just go around in like a haunted mansion or some kind of enclosed space and like discover secret passages and doors and discover like so much like and the mystery like unravels itself and it's just so cool. 
going to switch this to the RD after I get the bullets out of it. So, yeah. But I just, oh, I just love games, horror games with haunted mansions and stuff like that. And you may be saying, well, isn't that every horror game mostly? And I say, yes, and I still can't get enough of it. Okay, so remember those Greek letters that uh, we found? You align the Greek letters to match what you saw in the stained glass mural. After you match up the five Greek letters, the lock opens. You found a sheaf of letters and a red box. The box has happy birthday written on it and holds a corsage of dried flowers that crumble when you touch them. The letters are all signed Sophia de Lotta. I'll read these letters in a bit. Um, but if you don't pick them up, then you're going to have to fight another boss and you get the, uh, the bad ending with Charlotte's scenario. I'll show you both of them, but there are two requirements. Pray at Charlotte's grave, get the letters. That's a rare item. We're gonna save that for the gargoyle. Wait, uh, equip. Eh, we don't need to use all the stuff in there. shotgun RD that only has two it can only hold two I guess I'll show you it but I'm not gonna use it a lot is faster. I guess this way. Ooh, 
that shotgun has some impressive range. Good on it for, you know, getting that enemy at a distance instead of just like spraying bullets everywhere, which is what a shotgun usually does. Let Edward attack this thing. Good job. So we have both dolls now. Did they say anything if we read the descriptions? An antique bisque doll meant to be a child. The words to my precious Vinya are written on the bottom of one of its shoes. An antique bisque doll with a somewhat melancholy look on its face. The words to my dear daughter Valna are written on the bottom of one of its shoes. So we have to give them the dolls. Once you give them the dolls, Vinya and Valna stop moving. You got the green key. It looks like Vinya and Valna are dead again. So now would be a good time to read the letters. You don't actually have to read the letters in order to get this, uh, the good ending, but it's, it's interesting to read. Sophia's letter. Letter number one. My dearest daughter Charlotte, as I sit in silence struggling to write this letter to you in English, I can sense the arrival of winter is near at Arden Castle. 
I feel it makes me a bad mother since I am unable to make you happy. I cannot lament enough how my selfish affair has entangled so many people, including you, my dear, who were sent to Wales to encounter many sorrowful experiences. I probably will never see you, nor your brother, nor your sister again. But one thing that will not change is that you are my beloved daughter. You are the daughter of the man whom I love from the bottom of my heart, Philip Christopher. I am sure you must resemble him greatly. You were blessed when you were born, and that you are still alive is testament to that fact. I often wonder what the color of your eyes is, and how it would feel to run my hands through your hair. I can't help but to dream about the day I meet you, although deep down inside I know that day will never come. We might be far away in distance, but we are always together in my heart. Please take good care of yourself. Your mother, Sophia Dolora. Letter number two. My dearest daughter Charlotte, five summers have already passed since you entered this world. I think I must have written over twenty letters now. Despite my poor penmanship, how happy it makes me to know that my feelings are being conveyed to you. I wonder what I should tell you today. I think I will talk about your father. Your father, Philip Christopher, is the son of Count von Konismark, Sweden's artillery inspector general. Your father was a childhood friend of mine, and I am the daughter of a duke. Unfortunately, Philip and I eventually had to part. Due to the inevitable circumstances of our country, an arrangement was made so that I was to marry and be queen to Count Hanover, and spent days filled with hardship. It was your father who came into my life again and saved me. Your father and I spent many years loving each other. It's a fact that I fell in love with somebody, although I was already married. Some would call that a secretive affair, but our love was genuine and pure, especially when compared with the marriage arrangement with Count Hanover, which was stained with politics and power. Please forgive your foolish mother. Your mother, Sophia Dolotta. Letter number three. My dearest daughter Charlotte, please allow me to celebrate your twelfth birthday with you. May God's blessings and grace be with you. What would you like for your birthday? Would you like a raspberry cake? I should like to get you a beautiful dress, along with a golden hair ornament and brooch. I want to braid happiness in each loop of your hair. Then you could dance in the court like a precious jewel. My dear Charlotte, are you well? I hope you haven't become sick. I only wish to make you happy, even if I have to sacrifice my own life. Is that a wish that, c that cannot be granted? I would like very much to get to know you. Even if it's only a glance, I want to see how you've grown up. There isn't a day that goes by that I do not pray for your well-being. I try not to lament, but I love you from the bottom of my heart. Your mother, Sophia Dolotta. So, as you can see, uh, Charlotte mentioned that she was beheaded the day she turned nine. So that was written on her 12th birthday. So her mother was sending her letters even after she died. Charlotte Sal, first floor. There's still food on the table. You hear a young girl laughing softly. Suddenly, the furniture in the room starts to vibrate and space itself begins to twist. Wow, you suck.
least I could get both of them at the same time. Charlotte, do you know what these are? They're letters from your mother. My mother? Letters? There's so many. Did you know that your mother was a queen of Hanover? It seems that after you were born in secret, your mother was locked up inside Alden Castle. Even while she was imprisoned there, she sent many letters to you here in the monastery. She never laid eyes on you, but she often imagined what you looked like. She dreamt of the day when she would be able to see you. Her letters never got to you, and she was never told of your death, so she continued to write you letters even after you died. Your mother loved you, Charlotte. No, no, I can't, I can't take, take this now. She, she loved me? me? No, no, no. It, it's too, too scary. scary. Hey, hey, I feel warm. What's, What's happening? happening? No, no. Help, help me. me. You're not going to forgive her? She loves me? I hate you. I hate you. Don't you afraid for me. You, you, you. Charlotte, how does it feel to know you are loved? Charlotte's mother, Sophia Delotta, is based off of uh, Sophia Dorothea, who um, also had a similar affair and was locked up inside Alden Castle for the last 30 years of her life um, until she died. Um, in the letter it says um, Arden Castle, but um, that's just a mistranslation. Um, flare brooch. Okay. So this... Ah! No, I want the flare brooch first. Can anyone else wear the pendant? Oh, they can. Um... Ah, what am I doing? Here, you take the pendant, Edward, and Okay. Seems good. And now I will show you the bad ending. Charlotte, stop it. If you keep this up, you're the only one that's going to get hurt. I'm not fooling around. I don't want your pity. I have enough. Charlotte, listen to me. I understand you. We're very similar, you know. You could never understand me. How could you? I've never been out of this place. I was born and I was executed. On the day I was killed, a priest came to me and said, Dear Lord, please accept into your glorious kingdom this poor, sinful lamb. Tell me, what did I do that was so bad? Is it my fault that I was born? If I was born just to be killed, why did she have me? Oh, I just... My mother abandoned me, too. I've been alone ever since I was a little girl, just like you. That's why I... That's why what? That's why you understand me? That's why you're like me? Don't make him laugh. You're not like me. You're alive. What do you mean you're alone? What do you mean you understand? 
Give me a break. Oh, Charlotte, I'm so sorry. I want you to understand. I really... A curse upon you. What? A curse upon you. Charlotte. On you, on your friends, a curse upon you all. I will kill everything. Why don't you all just die? Die! When everything is dead and gone, then it will be the same. Only then will you understand my pain. I know what it is to regret being born. I will kill you! Kill you! Kill you! Good on this game for using an actual child to voice the child. Instead of a fake child. It's very good acting. All around. So it results in the same thing, but... That one's a little sadder than the one I'm about to show you. Um, and we got the star brooch instead of what we get in the... Um, the other ending. Ah, accessory. Star brooch. Woman's accessory with a golden statuette of the Holy Mother embedded in a topaz. The shape of the brooch is meant to suggest a star. I have shown you the bad ending. Um... The flare brooch we just got, this appears in women's accessory with a multifaceted ruby centered in a gold setting meant to represent the sun. So this appears in, um, Shadow Hearts, actually, and maybe in Covenant, too. That's all from Kadelka. The food that was on the table is gone. It was all an illusion. We're in Patrick's mansion now. Looks like you can move the statue if you try. Do you want to move the statue? And that unlocks this door. 